John, th thank you very much um, for hosting today's uh, panel, and thank you for the, um, the very kind invitation to, uh, to be here. Uh, I'm just going to say a few words about the future of Europe, uh, what Brexit means for the future of Europe, how the United States ties into all this, and then also I'd like to conclude by saying a few words about uh, what Margaret Thatcher thought about Britain leaving the, the EU. Um, and firstly, on the, the future of Europe, uh, in essence, the future of Europe will be decided between, between those who believe in sovereignty, self-determination, and the principles of liberty and freedom, and between those who believe in supranationalism, who believe in the centralization of, of power and the suppression of self-determination. And this is the great battle that defines Europe today. It's being fought in every single European uh, country. Uh, and this is uh, really an historic time. It's, it's a pivotal moment with, with Brexit. 17.4 uh, million Brits voted to leave the European Union. This, this, this is a real revolution here. Uh, and as often the case with, uh, with, with revolutions, the, the status quo tries to, uh, to stop it, to block it, to, uh, to uh, suppress it. And you're seeing that with the EU's reaction to, uh, to Brexit where the EU has treated the, uh, the negotiations with, with Great Britain as a form of punishment beating, as a sort of IRA-style knee-capping. Why? As, as a warning to every other European country of the consequences of daring to try and leave uh, the European uh, club. Uh, and the, the tremendous significance of, uh, of, of Brexit, uh, I think, is, is, uh, is understood to a great degree in the United States. Uh, and there is a reason why U.S. conservatives so strongly support Brexit, because they see Brexit as a reflection of the ideals uh, that have driven uh, the United States for, for centuries, the, the desire to be, to be free, to preserve that freedom, the desire for uh, the, the American people to shape their own destiny. And so for, for most Americans, they cannot understand why any uh, country in Europe would want to hand over control of their, their laws, their, their trade, their borders to uh, a bunch <coughs> of bureaucrats sitting in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, and I think the mindset of, the, uh, of the, the European elites was demonstrated clearly by Guy Verhofstadt, the, the Brexit negotiator in the European Parliament who was interviewed uh, recently. And, and he, he said that uh, the, the goal was to turn Britain into a colony of the, of the European Union. This is the mindset of of those who, who seek to uh, overturn Brexit, uh, of those who uh, seek to uh, submerge Britain and the whole of Europe within a federal uh, superstate. Uh, and uh, my former uh, boss, Margaret Thatcher, uh, wrote in, in Statecraft, which was her last, uh, her last book, uh, that uh, there's no greater folly in modern times than this, this uh, desire to create a European uh, superstate, uh, which is, is very much the goal of figures such as Emmanuel Macron, for example, who has uh, pushed for the creation of a European Union army. Uh, Macron says that an EU army is necessary to stand up not only to the Russians and the Chinese, but also uh, to the United States as well. And so there's a great deal of anti-Americanism that, that drives the entire uh, European uh, project. Uh, and I think that the present U.S. administration uh, understands this very well, which is why the U.S. president is so strongly in favor of Brexit. He is so strongly opposed uh, to the creation of a European Union army. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think the EU is viewed increasingly in the United States as a monument to big government. Uh, as, as Margaret Thatcher uh, described, a, a monumental folly, really. Uh, and this is really, uh, at the end of the day, a, a battle, a fundamental battle between between sovereignty and self-determination and supranationalism, between the principles of freedom uh, and, the, and, and the driving principles of unelected uh, bureaucrats who, who seek to hold sway over hundreds of millions of people. And everyone in Europe will have to make this choice in the coming years, the coming decades, whether they want to be truly free and sovereign or whether they, they wish their countries to be living in, in a state of, uh, of servitude uh, to, the, to the EU. Uh, and I think it is a very, very clear choice. And uh, I'm 100% certain that if, if Lady Thatcher were alive today, 
uh, she would have uh, greatly celebrated Brexit and everything that it stood for. And if she had been in charge of the negotiations with the, the European uh, Union, uh, she would have taken her handbag and, and handbagged, I'm sure, uh, th those Eurocrats standing in the way of a decision taken by the British people. The British people have spoken. That decision must be respected. They have voted for, for their freedom. That freedom cannot be denied or taken away. And it is important that uh, the, the whole of Europe respects that decision. It's important that Theresa May respects that decision. Uh, and it's a decision, I think, that is greatly welcomed by the American people, uh, who see Brexit as a, as a tremendous uh, opportunity to advance freedom across the world, but also a tremendous opportunity to, to strengthen the US-UK special relationship, uh, the, the greatest force, I think, for freedom that the world has seen. Thank you. Th thank you very much.